if you use the mobile or the TV to feed your child, then you need to watch this video. So whenever you distract your child with the TV or the mobile, they finish the whole bowl of food and you feel good about it. But just eating the food is never enough. What is more important than actually eating the food is that the food goes in and is digested effectively and the nutrients from the food are then absorbed and sent to the various cells of your child's body. That is what is really, really important. Now, how does that happen? So when the food comes in, your child's gut, your child's stomach, your child's small intestine should be ready with the enzymes that are required to digest that particular food. Now to know what's coming in and what needs to be kept ready, your child's gut needs to know what food is coming in. How does your child's gut know? Because your child's gut doesn't have eyes. Your child's gut is supposed to use your child's eyes to see what is coming in. So your child is supposed to smell the food and be like, hmm, that smells like spinach or palak. And then your child is supposed to look at it and say, hmm, that's green and it looks a little fibrous. And all these inputs go to your child's brain and your child's brain says, okay, send the enzymes to the gut that will be able to digest something which is green and fibrous and smells leafy. Then when your child eats the palak, your child chews the palak nicely, uh, feels the whole texture of the palak. By that time, more signals go down and more enzymes come in. And then when the palak reaches your child's stomach, all the enzymes attack the palak, break it down, extract all the nutrients and send it to the various cells of your child's body. Now, if your child is being distracted by the mobile or the TV, what happens then? Your child has child's stomach and intestine have no idea what's coming down. They don't keep the enzymes that are required ready. The palak comes in and the palak goes out. It's just not digested. So you will find that whenever you feed your child with the mobile or the TV, you give your child carrots or palak or whatever, it goes in and the next day you can look in the potty and you will find it just like that. It's just not been digested. And you're working really, really hard to finish bowls and bowls of food by distracting your child, by showing them the mobile and the TV, etc. But you will find that eventually your child is just as thin. You are exhausted, your child is thin. It's not working at all. So you need to stop feeding your child with the mobile or the TV. You need to help your child recognize the smell of food and say, hmm, that smells like ghee on rice. Wow, a beautiful meal is coming my way. You need to help your child look at the meal and say, wow, what's on your plate today? You have rice, you have dal and you have bindi. Wow. Wow. So, you know, your child gets all this input, then your child starts touching it, gets more input from here, chews it, gets more input from there. And that's how your child really, really digests and absorbs the food. Now, you may say, but my child is addicted to the mobile and the TV and will just not eat without the mobile or the TV. So what should I do? So there are five things you can do. So the first is eat with your child. Stop feeding your child, start eating with your child. Whenever someone eats in front of us, it makes us hungry. You would have seen that, you know, when you're eating alone, you eat much less. When you eat with somebody, you always eat more. So stop feeding your child, eat with your child. The second thing that you should do is talk to your child and have some fun. So we get hungry and we eat more when we are happy. You would have seen that when you go and visit your friend or you go for a party, you invariably eat more because it's more fun. At home, we're always only scolding children for not eating enough and they are unhappy and that's why they don't eat. So chat and laugh with your child.
The third thing you should do is give nutrient dense food. So don't give so much food. Give this much food, but use ingredients that are very rich in nutrients so that giving even this much food will actually give your child all the nutrients. If you want to know about nutrient dense recipes, do write to me and I will share with you how you can get my recipe list of 42 recipes that are nutrient dense and need to be given in very small amounts to your child. The fourth thing also related to this is give your child very little food. So the size of your child's stomach is the size of their fist. Never give more than that. Not your fist, your child's fist. Look at that. Get a bowl of that size and give your child only that much in one meal. If you feel your child is going to get hungry again, plan another meal. So you could divide the lunch into two parts and give one lunch at one o'clock and then follow it up with the remaining lunch at three o'clock. But at no point should you be giving more than the size of their fist. And last but not the least, don't create performance anxiety. Don't keep saying, finish it, finish it, finish it, finish it. Yes, you worked really hard to make that food. But if you insist that your child finishes a food, they will begin to hate that food. In fact, if you give very little of something, your child will always want it and like that food more. So that's in your favor. Do not insist on your child finishing the food. If they haven't finished it, if they are already full, just leave it. So it's very important to change the way we are parenting. The distract feeding has never worked, will not work. It's tiring, it's exhausting, and it does not help your child with nutrition. So stop doing that. Focus on using neuroscience in parenting such that parenting becomes really, really easy for you. I'm Dr. Deep Madadatta. I talk about parenting with neuroscience. Subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon when you subscribe so that you get notifications whenever I post a video. I will see you in my next video. Thank you.